Hello, this is Erin Quigley from Go Ask Erin, and in this video I'd like to show you how to get started in Lightroom 4 by importing your images from an existing folder on your drive. So, if you're new to Lightroom and just starting a new library, or if you already have a library started and just want to add more images from your drive, then this is how you go about it. Okay, let's start with a scenario in which you've been keeping an image folder somewhere on your computer that contains all your photos and videos. It's probably called My Photos or Pictures or something like that. It may have a ton of subfolders in it. That's okay. It may be by year, event, whatever. That's fine. But the point is you want Lightroom to reference those images where they currently live on your computer without moving them or changing them in any way. Okay, it's not a problem, so let's get started. At the bottom left-hand corner of the library module, click on the button that says Import. You can also access the Import module by opening the File menu, scrolling down, choosing Import Photos and Video, uh, or you can also use keyboard shortcuts, Shift-Command-I for Mac and Shift-Control-I for PC. They'll all get you to the same place, so that's okay. If you get to the import module and your window looks like this, this is the compact view by the way, click on the arrow at the bottom left to open it up, it gives you more options, and until you're used to working in this module, I recommend you use the larger version here. Okay, now that you're in the main import module, you need to tell Lightroom just a few things before you can actually connect your images to the Lightroom catalog. First, where are the images coming from? Okay, in this case, the source folder is whatever folder you've been storing your photos in. We just we're talking about that. So I'll navigate in the um, source panel folder browser to find that folder on my hard drive. By the way, this is not the most intuitive folder browser over here. It's got something called docking going on and it's not very intuitive. So what happens is when you double click on a folder, it toggles non-essential folders above it on and off. But as I said, it's a little confusing at first. So if you get lost, the way to find your way is close everything up and just go back and start over. It makes it much simpler. Okay, here, here it is, my photos. Now if I select it, what? What? No pictures. Wait a minute. I know that can't be right. I know they're all here. Well, check this out. Make sure this big button that says include subfolders is checked on. You'll also find this little teensy include subfolders checkbox at the top of the source panel. They're the same thing. And once you check it on, you'll start to see the images appear. All right. And by the way, if you prefer to navigate to the source folder using your operating system interface, you can do that by clicking on this arrow. You'll notice there's also an option to include subfolders here. Make sure it's selected and then choose other source and navigate to your folder from this window if you prefer this way. So now let's take a look at what we got here. All right, the checkboxes in the upper left of all these thumbnails are checked on and that means that all of these images are going to be imported. If you wanted to, you could go through and uncheck individual images to eliminate them from the import. Um, you can also uncheck all of them at once down here in the toolbar. You can check them all on at once. You can look at them in the grid mode, which is what we have now, or use this little icon to get to loop view. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts. That's G for grid and E for loop view. You can sort these images using these criteria. So you can look at them based on this different criteria. You can change the size of the thumbnails by using the slider here. Well, that's great. That's all well and good, but when it comes down to it, I prefer just to import them all into the library and sort through them there. It just seems like a cleaner workflow to me. Lightroom Library makes it so easy to see all your images at once and I just prefer it. But you choose what works for you in your workflow. All right, here are all our images. Lightroom sees what we wanted to import. We've got that right. But we have to tell Lightroom what we want it to do with these images as it's bringing in the source files. So. At the top of the import module in the center of the panel, Lightroom gives us some choices. There's copy as DNG. Nope, not this time. Copy, no. Although just as a sidebar, this is what you choose if you were gonna bring in images from your camera or uh, media card, but not for now. Move, no, I like my folder right where it is now. And finally, 
add. Now it's a little dim, but you can probably read underneath here. It says add photos to catalog without moving them. Yes, that's exactly right. I want Lightroom to simply add these images to the database without doing anything else. Remember, Lightroom doesn't do anything else to your pictures unless you tell it to. It doesn't put them in a proprietary file structure or vault or otherwise kidnap them in any way. The Lightroom catalog is just a database that collects information about your images and references that information when you call upon it to do so. Your photos are assets that Lightroom manages, nothing else. All right, not uh, I'm belaboring the point. So <laughs> let's move over here to the right hand side of the module and finish up by filling in some of these other details. In the file handling panel, you can tell Lightroom what kind of previews to render. Now, this is a bit of a controversial topic amongst wonky Lightroom types, but here is a quick and dirty explanation of these different preview choices and why you might choose any of them. Minimal and Embedded Sidecar both use the previews that are already embedded in your photo. These are relatively low quality previews. In the case of Minimal, they're not even color managed, but they will let the import process move more quickly. So they're only temporary previews. Lightroom's gonna render its own as soon as it can. So uh, if you want to speed up your import process, these would be good choices, but otherwise it might be better to choose standard or one-to-one. -one. Okay, standard builds a preview based on settings that you specify in your catalog settings. Lightroom has a certain default, but you can go in and change it. It stipulates the quality, the size of this preview. These standard previews, they will definitely speed up your browsing performance as long as you don't zoom in or go to the develop module. Everybody zooms into one-to-one -to, -one to see critical focus and you always wind up going to the develop module to at least do a little tweak, maybe a little crop, something like that. So once you do that, Lightroom has to render a one-to-one -one preview. I kind of think of rendering one-to-one -one previews like a tax. Either you pay it now at import with slower import times, and yes, it takes up more disk space, or I pay it later in the middle of my workflow when Lightroom has to stop, load the image, render the preview while I wait. It kind of drives me nuts. But even though I choose one-to-one -one previews, I don't stress about it too much because I can choose to discard them at any time from the Lightroom library module. I can also configure Lightroom to discard them automatically at regular intervals. I can do that in catalog settings and I can build standard or one-to-one -one previews at any time from the Lightroom library. So don't stress too much about this. Just over time, figure out what works best for you and go from there. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I strongly recommend you keep this next checkbox ticked on. This is don't import suspected duplicates. If you have suspected duplicates, they will be grayed out over here in the main import image window. So you'll be able to see what's not being imported. All right, when you add images to the catalog as opposed to copy or move them, some of the options are removed from you and making a second copy is one of them here. You'll notice that the option to make a second copy is grayed out. Okay, you can add certain kinds of metadata. Let's look at this. Develop settings are creative effect presets basically. These are all included in Lightroom, but for now just leave this set to none. If you want to add a warming filter or cross process or do black and whites or something like that, you might get some use out of these. You can also build your own develop presets by the way, but right now let's just leave this set to none. And then, oh this is great, so you can add a metadata preset. If you haven't created any for yourself yet, this menu will probably default to none. But as you can see, I've made some copyright presets and you can do the same really easily. Just select new presets here. You're gonna open up this metadata preset editor, name your new preset, enter whatever information you want to based on the kind of preset it is, click create, and then your new preset will show up over here in this metadata pull down menu and you can add it to all the images as they import. Very useful. All right, keywords. Now, keywords can also be added at any time from the Lightroom module and they're an incredibly powerful way of organizing your images. So I do recommend that you start using keywording whenever you can. But in this instance, if you're bringing in a folder with all these subfolders, who knows, it may be years, travel, family stuff, whatever. 
don't add anything here that doesn't apply to every single picture you're importing. So you might be able to add something like travel or underwater or even the camera that you shot with it. But the key is the keywords that you add here have to apply to every single image you're importing. Cool. Okay. Well, I think that looks like we have all the details dialed in now, so we can move on to the most important part. Even after all this setup, the images are not imported until you click here where it says import. Once you do, you'll find yourself back in the library module and you'll see the images beginning to populate your library. The Lightroom taskbar will show you exactly what's going on behind the scenes. And by the way, you don't need to wait for this to finish to start making your first pass here in the library by rating, rejecting, picking your favorites, all of that stuff. As long as you can see the thumbnail images, you can start to work on them. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here to the folder browser and I can see that my photos folder and the subfolders have been referenced, yay. I think that's it. So this concludes the video. Thanks so much for watching and I, I hope it's helpful. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. But for the meantime, this is Aaron Quigley from Go Ask Aaron signing off.